So, all city workers are essential. Yeah, I, a friend of mine sent this to me and said, hey, look at what Salinas is up to. And I'm like, oh my gosh. They, yeah, they, they, deemed, they deemed all their city workers, what was that, the 10th? So this past Sunday, or the, yeah, Friday, this past weekend, they said all employees are essential, so get back to work. Did they at least give them masks or something? Uh, it looks like no. <laughs> Great. But you're essential. Everything you know, is fine. Yeah, Sam, change your fine. background. Yep. <laughs> yep, everything's fine. So get over here. This doesn't seem right for a blue state. In a red state, I could see this. Well, I guess Salinas is a little red. I guess so. All right. And Caitlin's always got awesome stuff. So what's this? Terminal. So I did not realize this is possible. And, and I guess this is probably an old technique that I've never heard of before. So I thought, okay, this is cool. So you throw escape sequences in your shell code. And when you cat it out, it'll, it'll play back the, sh the shell code and, or the, the escape sequence. And it, what the escape sequence can do is go back, erase characters, and write something else. So you can't a script and I'll say, oh, it's just hello world. And then you run it and then it does evil things. I think that is awesome. And it works in Windows now. You uh, can apparently put, like, backspaces in? Yeah, exactly, wow. exactly. And it now works in Windows 10. They added that support in Windows 10, so now it works on all operating systems. Oh, that sounds awesome. Wow. Yes. Huh. Neat. But how do you make that? In a hex editor, I guess? No, you don't. Yeah, there's, um, I, they show you how to do it in the article, um, but it's essentially like you have the, the brackets and the E, and then you throw in your, your thing. I remember doing this, oh, God, all the way back when IRC was a thing, uh, using these characters, types of escape sequences. But good. yeah, yeah. Now, but apparently they added the support for Windows 10 and. I've never seen it. I've got matrix printers in the yeah. 90s anyway. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, that's good. So, so this I thought was uh, very interesting. There's a, um, the aircraft carriers are in deep trouble. They already had this one captain that got in trouble for complaining about the virus spreading on, on his crew on the aircraft carrier. So the man that asked him to let him know if he had any problems, then fired him and flew in to give a one-hour speech imitating Trump because the previous head of the Navy was fired by Trump. So the new guy tries to act like Trump to curry favor, but that speech leaked and so he had to resign too. But the fact remains that on our ships, coronavirus is spreading like crazy and our military is not ready for battle for that reason. And they said what they have to do is they have to bring in the whole ship take everybody off, disinfect the whole place, make everybody go to two weeks of quarantine and get back on the ship. And then nobody gets off the ship again until we have an, a, uh, a uh, vaccine. It's the only way you can have a ready military. And yet the military is not willing to do that because of course that would contradict Trump's political line that everything is fine and we don't have to do anything. So uh, they are doing it for that one ship and the military commanders are running around trying to figure out how they can make the military ready without taking a politically uh, undesirable action. But huh, that doesn't that seem possible. But not yeah. to science, but science is not very important in the world of politics. Of course, this is, you know, this is a big thing. We have these politicians over the military and that I think we reached as the best solution. They tried the other ones like in Rome. If you don't have like civilians over the military, things get even worse. But anyway. I think I read something about, uh, you know, the Captain Crozier was the guy that got uh, relieved from his post for yeah. um, writing that letter about how, uh, you know, hey, this is a major problem, we need to get in. And then a bunch of people on that ship uh, ended up having it. And uh, I think I read that the guy who um, came down on him, um, was dismissed or quit, and that the captain was reinstated, so. Oh, I didn't know the captain was reinstated. That would be nice. Oh, yeah. But yeah. The, I didn't I, know that either. But the, um, but of course, the other thing that was interesting is this is one of the only two cases I know where they actually gave enough tests to test an entire population and see how many people are infected. And on the aircraft carrier, they found that 60% of the people had no symptoms and were carriers. And that's really important, of course, because that means mitigation procedures are pretty much hosed. Unless you can actually test everybody, if you test people with symptoms, you're not even getting half of the carriers. So anyway, that 
And we had so few tests available. We haven't had any. Uh, there's only two groups I know that have been tested thoroughly, and this is one of them. Anyway. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I was mistaken there. Uh, they're deciding. He's he's going to yeah. decide whether to uh, reinstate or reassign or um, other. Yeah, yeah. Right, right now they're both kind of out, but yeah. It, <laughs> I think along with well, I think I play a character that has type 2 now. Oh, sorry. Of whether they're going to actually do anything about uh, the coronavirus in the military, but I think they have to. Yeah, especially on those ships and... Uh, and the like the nuclear subs, there's no way you can uh, do any kind of social distancing because um, it, the quarters are so tight and everybody's like touching the same ladder rungs and the same keyboards and everything yeah. else. Yeah, they say you're totally just stacked on top of each other. The only way they can possibly make anything work is to make sure nobody has it on there. Anyway, so this is the one you had. Uh, yeah, so I thought this was interesting. You know, it's old news uh, that you can go hop on the internet and buy uh, buy data dumps, but now uh, I thought this it's interesting that um, uh, manuals on how to commit fraud and cyber crimes are are now just as popular, and uh, I, I think that's pretty interesting. Apparently, you know, people are making monies off of these uh, tutorials on on how to commit cyber crime. And, uh, it, you know, it's, we teach ethical hacking. These, these people are teaching unethical hacking. I've but the article that. made the point that this is actually a good thing because, um, you know, proactive companies can go out there and actually get these manuals and read them and then, then patch up their holes, which I thought was an interesting take on it. I remember around 2012, I had people in my class who wanted to learn how to commit crimes. And they were very disgusted when they found out I had this boring class with a book <laughs> and tests and port numbers. And come on, when do we get to steal stuff? So they left. <laughs> and then I went to uh, DEF CON and they had School for Lulz was there. with a guy teaching black hat techniques, supposedly. Anyway, it was, uh, it was a real circus. Anyways, well, you know, it, the, whole, the dark market is just like the other market. <laughs> I, yeah, the thing that got me is about five years ago, they would sell you criminal tools with a product key with anti-piracy and make sure there's not two copies of it running just like Microsoft. Yeah, apparently I've, I've, I've heard um, or heard or read in certain cases that the uh, support for these products can be better than actual commercial products. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I've got I've heard, I mean, there's a failed states where the only jobs are in organized crime. <laughs> And the same people that get degrees and are spending all day writing viruses and stuff. Anyway, all right. So foreign hackers targeted COVID-19 research. Is there any COVID-19 research we're stealing? Uh, apparently that's what's how, what the FBI has seen is people are, are pointing their guns at, at COVID-19 research. In, in a way it's kind of like it, in the way I kind of saw it coming, because the people, it's it's the usual thing of people scrambling to find a, a answer or you know working quickly and not putting security in mind. Kind of like that that little conversation we were having on Twitter about uh, the S3 bucket and and the disks is people are setting stuff up quickly and not not thinking security. Well, I guess I'm just surprised that the criminals are wasting their time. Obviously, nobody has any information worth stealing about Corona-19, but maybe they do. I mean, if somebody actually had a vaccine that worked or something, then you might want to steal that. But yeah. I don't think anybody has anything <laughs> worth stealing. Not yet, but they're in the target. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. And Pwn Drop. Yes. Uh, so in my engagements, it usually goes something like this. I you know, enumerate the system, I get on there. And then the first thing is like, okay, I need to get something onto the system. How do I do that? Uh, and usually it involves, you know, creating a HTTP server. Sometimes it's a party. Sometimes I'm just using like a little Python, simple HTTP server type deal. Uh, but this is a package, open source package, specifically for getting packages onto uh, attack systems. And that is awesome. And I'm definitely going to be using that in the future. So you, but I mean, doesn't any IP address you use for this get burned as a malicious IP? 
I thought you, I, could, you could throw away cloud servers for this kind of thing. You can absolutely throw it all away. You can throw it onto a cloud server. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, you can also have it set up so that, for example, if you wanted a, a, the machine, only the machine you're targeting to get the correct file, you can do that. So if, if another machine tries to download your, uh, your malicious item, it will uh, download something else. Oh, that's cool. Now, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking you could just do it with a firewall, but this is a little smarter than that. It's almost like an opposite of a honeypot. Exactly. Right. Yeah, no, no. This, this, like I said, at every every op, pretty much, there's always a time where it's like, oh, I got to figure out a way to get an item on the system, and I wish there was like a standard way of, you know, setting up an HTTP server to do this, and this is it. Phone drop. Well, now what the bad guys do is they include a downloader in the malware. But anyway. Well, I mean that that's true too. I mean you can if you assume, I mean the thing is you have to get that malware on the system first though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so I got more of these things, which I thought were very interesting. Um, so trying to make any plan of how we're going to get back to normal after this is hard to get. And I, cause I think um, one thing I had hoped was that we'd have anti, we have antibody tests. That means some group of people can be considered immune, but apparently that is useless. The people that test positive are not immune. The tests are so inaccurate. You don't find out how it's immune, so that's no good. So the only thing we can do before that is um, try to test enough people, even the people without symptoms, that we can test and track everyone. But that's going to take 200 times as many tests as we have and an army of like 100,000 people calling everybody to find out if they're quarantining themselves and stuff. So it's really unclear. But anyway, uh, one thing that's for clear is California has been a real world leader here. I mean, America as a whole is the worst nation on earth, but California is by far the best state. We, and the, because we shut down San Francisco something like three days before the rest of California and California something like a week before the other states, the difference is unbelievable. So few people died and so few people got sick here. So it really is nice, but this is of course not sustainable. And we're seeing the president and everybody freaking out and saying we have to get back out to work. And, um, I think it's not clear how we're going to do this at all, but the tests are, our tests are critical and we just don't have them. And we now have, the number of tests is actually dropping off and it's, I don't see a way out of this, but it is an interesting social engineering experiment, how Trump can just lie about the tests and then lie again about the tests and lie again about the tests and nothing ever comes due. He knows something that uh, logical people don't know about yeah. how to lie. He knows that, well you, people will always believe him. Nobody will ever care when he lies and lies and lies. His base couldn't care less. He, he knows something about social engineering that I would like to understand better. I think that, it, that, I think that there's a vested interest in keeping um, these tests scarce because it keeps our numbers down. These numbers are artificially low because yeah. of the lack of testing. That's true. He said that. That's why he didn't want to let the cruise ship land. He wanted the people to just die on the cruise ship so the numbers would stay down because all he thinks about is numbers and ratings. But, but his base doesn't care. His base is, is, this is, I think, true of other countries too, ruled by, by cruel, sadistic dictators. They're loved by their people, like Saddam Hussein. They enjoy being trampled and ground underfoot and used by the dictator. It's, there's a, a social engineering, something happening there. He's got them hypnotized to love him and enjoy being just abused by him because he knows how to say what they want to hear. And that's all that matters. I think it's the same thing as preachers, like preachers that convince you to drink poison Kool-Aid and reincarnate in heaven. There's, there's something really powerful about this, this social control over people that I would like to understand better. Sam, you're starting to sound like a socialist. Well, I don't, well, I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard of a socialist <laughs> position, on socialist. but, but the, the psychology is amazing. It seems like really good marketing. That's it. That's what it is. And that's what people said when they voted for Trump. They said, he's a salesman. He knows how to sell things, which is absolutely true. He can sell people death. I'm going to kill your grandparents, and they love him for it. I wouldn't have thought it was possible, but he can do that. It's really mind-blowing. Well, I would you know, like to see what would happen if we had no TV for like two weeks. If we had the US on a, uh, on a network television quarantine for two weeks, what would happen? Well, you know, I threw away my TV 15 or 20 years ago and it may be correlated with the fact that I can't understand this at all. 
<laughs> I think I think it's based on some kind of of social control that I'm outside the system of. As usual, you're always outside the matrix. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'm outside the matrix, but I'm I'm outside the norm, and I always have been, for better or worse. Anyway, so Liz, you've got uh, a bunch of foreign yeah pile of uh, pile of nation states uh, attacks leveled against us, which is good that you grouped them all together because I could I not. I just couldn't even pick. There's just so much going on, and uh, it's really kind of insane all the stuff that's happening right now. Uh, that we're not even really kind of privy to or aware of or, or it, it, that's in the news that's going on. Well, that's what um, I was say about it last semester. So a lot of this, I knew at least what was happening last year. Sure. Uh, well, they, they've, they've definitely uh, stepped up their game. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting, too, how they're, they're uh, deliberately targeting um, government contractors now. Uh, which makes sense. I mean, it makes a ton of sense. And I, and I thought this, this story was really interesting too about uh, hitting uh, a couple of sites uh, associated, successfully hitting a couple sites associated with uh, SFO. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, this is again, <laughs> the blame falls on SFO, but they, uh, they contracted this out to somebody who, um, you know, who implemented it poorly. What I thought was really interesting was that, uh, was, uh, they weren't targeting, um, like visitors info. They were, uh, targeting, uh, uh, NTLM hashes. Yeah. Which is, that's what I was laughing at, because the only thing you can do with the Zoom attack is steal NTLM hashes. And I was thinking, that doesn't really matter, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I, I think we're missing the, the real point here, uh, which is, can we all agree that Electric Panda is the best name for a hacker group ever? Electric. <laughs> it's it's Electric. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there, I don't know, there's a lot of good ones, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I thought, I, thought, I thought Fancy Bear was pretty good too, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so one thing that I've wondered about is right now during the time of this virus, it's clearly the time for a military attack. Everybody is far yep. from ready. And it seems like the only thing they're doing is cyber attacks. I think it's because all our enemies' military is out of, are out of action too. And also because direct nation-to-nation -nation warfare seems to have gone out of style. It's this subtle stuff behind the scenes, sort of like the Cold War. Yeah. These cyber attacks. That way you don't have to suffer the punishment of a direct conflict. And hey, your soldiers can launch the war right from home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it can be uh, just as damaging in different ways, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like air power, though. You can't hold territory with it. All you can do is mess up somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, anyway, it's in there's this one. That's right. You sent me this one about the Mediterranean Shipping Company. I went and looked up another one to try to decide how important it was. And this is apparently the number two shipping company in the world. It's really important. Yeah. Yeah, so I went by the the original article that I sent you. The yeah, the, which is the official yeah, statement. Yeah, right from them. Yeah, uh, they said uh, this was a, a targeted attack. It's somewhere in like the the bottom of it. Yeah. Like okay, so they they were able to see that that was happening and they they mitigated it. That's cool. And looks like most of their business wasn't affected. But uh, yeah, it was a target attack. Yep. Oh. This, this is a uh, part of a double whammy. They've been also attacking the uh, uh, GPS satellites that um, to screw up the positioning of the ships and get them, you know, get them lost. Yeah. You know, I couldn't even find a statement that it was a targeted attack. Yeah, it's right. It's your yeah. mouth is right, right about there. Well, all I find is double talk dancing around it without saying that, as far as I can tell. As it was being investigated, yeah, let me tell them if it was a malware. Attack. Yeah, Based on an engineered yeah, targeted target. vulnerability. What is an engineered targeted vulnerability? Uh, using Pwn Drop. So it was Caitlin. I'm <laughs> assuming as much. This one here might be more clear, but it's probably just based on that other report. Okay, malware attack based on an engineered targeted vulnerability. Well, that remains as clear as mud. 
Yeah. Okay. But it's anyway, not, it reads like a statement from the college. Yeah, or it's from a lawyer, basically. They, it's they, it's the bare minimum that will satisfy some disclosure compliance rule, I assume. Right. Right. And admitting any more would like be uh, subjecting them to liability or something. So we already know it was pawn drop. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. I didn't mean for it to go public like that. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so her whole family's dead. She yeah, yeah, everyone's dead. Everything's fine. Um, so what happened is that there was um, some photos taken a while ago by a professional, and someone decided to pick them up and use them in an ad, I guess, for PPE. And the ad said, "Oh, all these people died. If they only had our PPE, they could have lived." Well, this isn't a stock photo. This is a real family photo. Uh, the people are still alive, um, but there are a lot of people on Facebook who are wondering, hey, are, are, are you okay? Um, and this really ties into something that I've been very worried about with social media and just images and stuff on the internet is that, I, and I'm guilty of this too, you, you try to find uh, a piece of artwork or something that you want to use in your product and you go on Google Images and you just find the first, Yeah you know, thing and you throw it in there and you just assume, you know, you're gonna change it later or whatever. But you know, something happens, you forget. Um, and so what's happening is that our, our personal data, our personal photos, um, things like that are showing up in ads that can be quite concerning. But I thought this was actually officially part of the Facebook terms of service and also the image hosting sites. They said, we will take your picture and put it in ads whether you like it or not, without even telling you, I thought that was okay. I, I mean, you would, one would assume, well, first of all, uh, legally, everyone knows that no one reads the terms of service. Right. So the fact that it's in the terms of service is a moot point. Um, you can say whatever you want in the, in the terms of service. It doesn't hold any weight in court. Uh, also, if someone assumes that, that uh, a service is going to put your photos that you put on it in an ad, they assume it's for that service, not for someone to hawk PPE saying that your family's dead. I think if I, I think my lawyer could beat up your lawyer for these things. <laughs> <my support. laughs> I think both of those are things I could argue against. But anyway, you could, you could try arguing, arguing against them, but I think you would find that in, in, in actual court, it is well understood that people do not read the terms of services. Maybe in California, we just got to redistrict it to Texas. Oh, okay. There we go. Get a different answer. Yeah. yeah. Re re redistrict it to uh, Guam. <laughs> that could be, yeah. But not Europe. It wouldn't go over very well in Europe. No. So anyway, I just saw a good ad for Biden today to make me feel better, but I've certainly felt like this, like I'm really, really tired of Trump and Biden seems to be nowhere. But uh, anyway, hopefully he will do something, but it is very much, he doesn't seem to be doing anything. And what I think... Um, now there are some videos, ads coming out that look better of him of mocking Trump. But I think the strategy of the Democrats seemed to be to just do nothing and wait for Trump to destroy himself. And I don't think that's going to work. Trump seems to know how to spin everything to his advantage. I think they really need to fight back. So I mean, I, I don't know what you think. I think Trump is still going to win the next election. I don't I can't think remember what election. it was, but he contra he contradicted himself within the same press junket. Like he, he said something does. and then 20 minutes later, he was like, oh, I, I didn't say that. Or, and, and I was just like, you it just followers. said it in this same press briefing. His followers love that. They, and they believe it, they buy it up. They do, because they're not listening to the words. They're listening to like the emotional tone and his right. raw meat of making you feel superior and angry at those rotten liberals is the same thing preachers give you. We have to kill all those people because they're against our God and they're destroying our children. And that, it's so much fun to feel self-righteous that it doesn't really matter that the details make no sense. Liberate Minnesota. Liberate Michigan. Yes. And that's why I think, um, I think he's going to be very hard to stop. Dictators in other countries that feed people this kind of hatred against an ethnic group, which is his main ploy, are very hard to stop. People love that. And I don't, the Democrats need somebody with a real emotional appeal. Now, Obama had it. Obama would have people chanting quotes of, yes, we can. He would he could get excite people. But Biden does not seem to have it. Bernie had it. I just, I just don't think Biden, I think Biden against Trump is like Bambi meets Godzilla. I really, <laughs> think, 
I really don't think yeah. he's got it. That's a good analogy. Yeah. We, we, anyway, well. we just need enough people who are willing to to hate Trump enough just to vote for Biden just because. Well, that's what happened in Milwaukee. I was amazed. My my sister was in Milwaukee. Then Milwaukee, where they the it's totally rigged, and the Democrats got so mad they actually came out and voted. Mm-hmm. There's some point when they finally get fed up enough that they get out and vote. Maybe this will be it, but I don't know. Anyway, all right. Uh, and then we got BGP attacks. Yeah. So I thought this was interesting. Um, they I, now I didn't even know. It actually surprised me uh, that China Telecom had a presence in U.S. or that they. Um, well, yeah. There's any kind of international routing out of here. Uh, and I couldn't find, I looked, but I couldn't find anything telling me exactly, uh, you know, ex- exactly how they, their, what their plan was to get them out of here, because I'm not entirely sure uh, you can control that. They're the uh, second biggest mobile operator in America? What's that? It says they're the second biggest mobile operator. Is that in America or in China? Uh, in China. Okay. How big are they in America? Well, that's what I couldn't find. Um, I couldn't find like what their actual presence was here. Oh, oh. Because... you don't want them to be able to provide services to and from the United States. Right, the right. And I'm, I, 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 I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how you necessarily control that that means you if you had their service in china you couldn't call a phone in the united states is that what it means hmm. uh, yeah i don't know and it didn't say it, it uh, the um government documents just enumerated all the reasons to do it it didn't say how to implement it i mean this is of course the problem with the internet i mean like you're right the, exactly everybody has to be playing the game and therefore everybody can abuse it yeah, um, and, and it, that I, was, I was seeing something where uh, there was just a problem. Um, there was just a problem recently where uh, traffic, like a couple weeks ago maybe, where a bunch of traffic got routed through Russia accidentally. Um, accidentally. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that was Zoom. That was Zoom. Was it? Yeah. Because um, it affected like a whole slew of things like Cloudflare and uh, Amazon and... Yeah, I didn't see June, but it did affect DigitalOcean and Amazon, yeah. So Sam, check the chat. Above. Yeah, it's, it's, I see that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I see. The topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's cool. That's very cool. Okay. Uh, in fact, one of my uh, students showed me this today, which I had no idea it existed. I'm amazed any part of it is safe since when? Uh, you can test your own ISP yeah. to see if your ISP is um, implementing BGP correctly. So if you push the button. If it's implementing BGP correctly, I, all right. Ah, it is not. Should be using RPKI. Neat. Ooh. Well, this is very interesting. Yeah. I didn't know there was any safety option available for BGP at all. There, well, you have to configure it correctly, and if you follow certain standards, RP- uh, it is somewhat safe. Um, right. So that brings me back to my original point, which is I don't know how they're going to enforce this. Well, this uh, see, this is what I would think. You can't stop China from being on the internet. What you can do is start filtering BGP to a right. false route, and that looks like that's what this is for. It, it is, but uh, it is, and it's for checking to see, you know, uh, what's going on with your ISP. But what I'm saying is, is that I don't know how they're going to enforce the implementation of this. Oh, but I think it's easy. If we implemented it on our gateways, accepting traffic from China, then they could not falsely claim to be routing traffic from American companies anymore. And it would only affect people inside China, and that wouldn't be our problem. What I'm saying is, I don't know how our government is going to enforce oh. users to configure things no. properly. Oh, well, the, of course. well, the government's nowhere, but it will be the ISPs doing it. I think yeah. um, it, just like HTTPS and other things, it's not a government activity. It's when the, uh, the providers are sort of pressured into doing it. Sort of pressured, which is the problem. That, that you, and it just never happens. Like, none of them care about any of this stuff, and there are no penalties for disobeying it. 
Well, no, I think the browser makers forced them to go to HTTPS by putting up warnings for sites that aren't secure. And they, the, the browser, your browser could be checking like this and putting up a warning saying uh, your provider is not secure and that would do it. So I think, you know, I think it could happen, but I don't know any details yet. All right, I'm very interested to hear about this. Uh, there used to be something called BGP sec that went nowhere. This one I've not heard of, RPKI, may be the one that should be out there. I know Cloudflare itself went down a while ago because of a bad BGP update, and they talked about how they were going to have a check system for BGP updates to make sure that wouldn't happen again. So it is a big issue. Yeah, well, anyway, all right, are there any more comments? I'm surprised level three is not... Uh... Is yeah. one of the unsafe ones of all the ones you would think would be up at the top. Yeah, level three is. Uh, I am surprised by that as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, like Comcast, I get. Google, I get. Sprint, I get. Mm -hmm. Level three. Okay. Right, <laughs> especially considering, especially considering they're in control of the uh, entrance node in SF. Like yeah. everything comes through them, so you'd think they'd be on it. Yep, they're, mm -hmm. they pretty much are the backbone of the internet, and uh, you would hope that they would be on top of all this, but I guess not. I would have expected better out of Hurricane Electric, too, actually. Yeah, that's another, that's another one. Hmm. Hmm, not good. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>